Um, we have Henry joining us, who is a City Music alum. He received the full tuition scholarship to Berkeley College of Music, and he graduated with a degree in business management. Um, and also is a, an incredible drummer, singer, songwriter, producer. There's really not much Henry can't do. And he's always been like that since um, I've known him. Henry and I went to five weeks together when we were in high school um, in 2011 and 2012. Um, and he's just an all around great musician and creative, um, creates a lot of content for his um, Instagram following and is uh, just like a creative polymath overall. So I'm really excited to introduce him for this session. He's gonna, we're gonna have a little conversation just about his creative process, you know, kind of uh, prolonging the theme that we talked about last week of knowing your why as an artist, um, developing your artist aesthetic and your sound and really understanding what it is you're trying to communicate message wise. Um, as you go out into the industry as a creative uh, and just hopefully equipping you with some skills where you can really uh, understand what your next steps are in launching your career as a, as a creative and as an artist. So without further ado, I'm gonna uh, introduce Henry to the, right. to the virtual stage. Hey, Henry. Well, Sam, thank you for that intro, you feel me? Appreciate that. What's up, what's up, y'all? Hope y'all yes. doing good out there. Yeah, so obviously it's been a, a minute since we were um, you know, on campus as five week students going back and forth between classes and um, you know, getting together and jamming and like learning each other uh, through music. But I would love to hear just kind of how you started in music overall, right? From even before you you attended your first five week, but then also how did you get involved with City Music as a program? Oh uh, yeah, so I started off, really, I started off playing uh, African drums. Um, like uh, my sister was in Afro, like Afro-Haitian and stuff. So I, I picked up the djembe and then like I moved on from there like I was always at church and stuff. So like, I kind of like wanted to move on to the drum set. And like, I always, you know, play the drums at church and everything. And I kind of like fell in love with it. And it kind of like just gave me like a little out, like a little, a little out cause I was going through a lot of stuff coming from Oakland. I was going through, you know, a lot of different things. So like kind of it was dope to just like have a little escape and go play drums and stuff. And it was just like, like a different love. And uh, I played football as well, but like, it was something about the drums that just kind of just like, I just resonated with it. And then uh, I kept, you know, practicing, making that like my, my priority, like, like after school, just go straight to play drums. And then I heard about five weeks, I didn't do city music the first time. I was a, a part of this jazz band in high school and we went to Monterey Jazz Festival. And like, it was just like, they're like, oh, you can uh, audition to get a full tuition scholarship to this program called um, called Five Week Berkeley, and I was like, "Oh, okay, let, let me try that out." So like, I kind of just went, I did it. They gave me the full tuition scholarship, and then like, I begged my parents to like help me like fund the housing because the housing is expensive too. So I was like, "Please, please!" So like, we did like the whole family kind of like came together to help me like go to uh, Boston, and then. I met a lot of folks, like you said, the jam sessions, like everybody was at the jam sessions. I'm out there, I'm like, it's my first time away from home. So I'm like, y'all, this is crazy. You know, like I'm out here, all these kids, we did have curfew though, know, but I was still like, you know, like, oh, this is dope. So I'm being everybody and just like, I mean, different people in city music. I didn't really know what city music was, to be honest. And then like, I saw everybody was competing to, uh, for a full ride and everything. I'm just like, yo, like what, full scholarships? So I was like, I, had, I was determined. I was like, how do I get into this? And I saw like, it was Dr. Banfield, Mr. Carter. And I was like, let me set up a meeting. And how I got into City Music, I set up a meeting the last week or five weeks with Curtis before I left to Oakland. And I was like, I'm, I'm from Oakland. I want to be a part of City Music. Like, how do I do this? Like, he, he put me in contact with the people in the Bay Area, which is in Richmond. And that's how I became a part of City Music. Literally. <laughs> yeah, you um, 
yeah, you, you, I mean, we had such a, an awesome time and, and I think that it um, is so great. It's such a great program because you get to meet so many people from across the country. I know that like you put all of us on the East coast on to so much that we didn't know about the West coast and vice versa yeah. during that time. <laughs> And, um, and it's just like a great opportunity to connect with other people and learn different types of music um, that you don't get access to otherwise, even on a global scale. I wanna know more about like when you were actually in the five-week program and even because you ended up going to, to Berkeley, kind of what was your, like how did you start to form your um, unique artist voice? Like when did you really start to feel like you were coming into your own as an artist um, and starting to develop your sound? Cause I know that you started off like as a, you know your principal instrument was drums but you could also sing, you could also play keys. And then you started to kind of make a shift into production and being like a solo artist and, and having all of these different sides of you come together. So when did you kind of feel that shift and maybe how did being at Berkeley, whether in high school or college contribute to that? Oh, I'm gonna just do Berkeley because Berkeley, well, first of all, shout out City Music, changed my life, literally changed my life. I'm not gonna lie, I, don't, I wouldn't be where I'm at today if it wasn't for City Music. And that's just like real spill. Um, to be honest, like, at Berkeley, you gotta understand, it's people from all over the world, it's people from all over the United States, like everybody is good at what they do. They're not here because they, if they're not good, you know, everybody is good at what they do. So like I play drums, yeah, I mean, I was killing in my city, killing in the Bay. Like, you know, I come to Berkeley, it's people from all over the world is doing what I'm doing. It's people from the South doing what I'm doing. So it's just like, what makes you different? Like tune in to what makes you different because everybody can play drums, everybody can do this. So it's kind of like, okay, like I'm in here playing drums. Like, okay, I can play keys too. Like what else, what else can I tap into? What else can I grow in? And I kind of just like, was just dabbling in different things. And like, I could sing a little bit, I could sing all the way, but being in Berkeley, everybody was singing. Like you can really sing. So I was kind of like, just learning, like collabing, like, yo, let's, let's link up. Wait, wait, wait. Let's link up, teach me how you did that. Like, it was more so just like, don't be afraid to tap in with your peers. Don't be afraid to tap in and like really make a lot of friends. I made so many friends in Berkeley. Like I tapped in with everybody. Like, I didn't care who you were. Like, I'm, I'm one of those people, like, you know, where I come from, it's just like, it's like, a lot of this weird stuff, you feel me? So like, I can't Berkeley. I'm just like, you know, like open my mind. Like I'm talking, I'm tapping in with anybody. Like what you, what you do, what you want? Like, let me hear something. Let me, what you got going on? Let's link, let's collab on something. And like, you learn a lot from people. Like I kind of like learn a lot from like all my peers, honestly, like to grow into where I'm at today. And then uh, all the classes, like I did music business management because it's like, I didn't really think I was like, okay, like I could perform. I've been performing my whole life in church and drums. And like, it's like, let me learn the business side of things. Cause everybody's getting production like you being like you know like i'm saying like the production side of things so i kind of want to know the business side of things because like we can go on youtube and figure out some things on production and stuff but um i kind of really started to like give my sound as like tune into like an artist in production after i did an internship because like with the business major you know you got to do an internship so i went to uh la like the summer i forgot what, what year it was 2016 like I did like my internship in LA I chose to do the program Berkeley has a program where like you can go to LA and like they house you too so like I chose uh to work with Harvey Mason Jr who is now like the president of uh the Grammys of what you call it I think it's like the Grammys whatever you call it Sam the Grammy Academy or, or the recording academy yeah Oh, you're muted. Yeah, the Recording Academy. But um, yeah, I went to uh, LA to intern with Harvey Mason Jr. and Damon Thomas. They were called the underdogs. They did everything for Chris Brown, uh, Demi Lovato, everybody. So I kind of just went over there as like management though, to like manage like the studio. But then I fell in love with like the songwriting process. So like I was an intern, but it's kind of like, 
a lot of interns, they fell in the trap of intern. I fell in the trap of like, I'm not trying to really be an intern. I kind of like hiding in the studio. Like, I was like, okay, like I ain't gonna do all this cleaning and stuff. I'm gonna hide in the studio real quick. And like, I was tucking off, like, I'm not gonna go clean and go do no runs and go uh, pick up your food. Like I, I did it a couple of times cause you had to, but I'll go hide in the studio cause I fell in love with it and fell in love with the songwriting process. Chris Brown pulled up and I'm just like, yo, where am I? Like, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, bro, hold up. And then I just kept on tapping in with a dude named Mike Daly. And he was like the head manager there. And I told him, I was like, yo, I'm trying to like get some softwares and stuff. Like he hooked me up with Logic, uh, the new Logic, he hooked me up with all these uh, sounds, like all these plugins and everything. And I kind of just like fell in love with that. But I still, you know, I still play drums and everything, but it just started, like, it was like a new look. I saw how like they were making music and like going on the radio. I'm like, wait, I just heard y'all do that. I'm just like, hold up. Like, I'm over here tripped out. So it's like, kind of like found a new love from that. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I, I think that's um, what you said about your internship where it's like, you know that there's certain things that you have to kind of do, but you end up, you don't want to get stuck in the um, kind of like the bucket of staying an intern or like only yeah. being seen that way and finding like the pockets of the experience that you love and networking while you're there to make sure that um, they're seeing you as, you know, a peer and not just an intern while there's like a lot of things that you do kind of have to like climb the ropes that a lot of it is just who you know and making the connections and being confident and stepping into literally the confidence and knowing your worth as an artist so I think it's awesome that that you did that and you created all of those opportunities for yourself especially with when you're just starting out in production or you kind of that I think that equipment and um and software and all of the things that can add up money wise can be a barrier to actually getting started so it's awesome that somebody helped you get that just off the bat um I want to ask a little bit more about like how you define your why as a creative, right? So like what's your reason or your purpose for creating and what makes you, you as an artist kind of like, why do you create music and, and what drives you and what's like the message that you want to put forth when you, uh, when you perform, when you put things out, when people look at you as Henry and how did you get to that point? Uh, really? It's like therapy, to be honest. Like music was like my therapy. I don't know if people use music in different ways, but honestly, it was like going through a lot, just like a lot of a lot of stuff, like coming up and everything. It was more so just like therapy. Like it was my therapy. And then like I never really been afraid to just show. Never been afraid, like scared, because like as creators, we think too much sometimes. Like especially like very talented creators, we might be in our head too much are like too afraid to show like what we what we doing and like what's going on like but that's what people like people draw into you when you like show because they, they might be going with, through what you're going through so it was more so like therapy and when I put out the first record that I ever like did or not I didn't even care I just put it out and I was before Spotify and everything I just go on SoundCloud and I got like this response so I was just like yo hold up like I wasn't expecting that. And I was just getting it from people at Berkeley who sing. So they was like, who is Bert? Like, I'm, you play drums. Like, you you put this out? And I was like, yeah, like, I'm putting out music because I don't care. And I, even the singers wasn't even putting out music that I knew that was out there. I was like, I don't care. I'm a drummer. But like, look, I can sing a little bit. I'm throwing it out there. And like, the response was crazy. And like, even got on this show. And I was like, I wasn't expecting people asking me, like, can I put it on this TV show? And I'm just like, oh go ahead let's, let's do that and then um after that i just kind of just like okay like i'm gonna continue to just write continue to just like write about what i'm going through like it takes a minute too like to really like really like write about like what you're going through too like like now like that's what i definitely do like write about all the things i went through coming up and um honestly like it draws a lot of people towards you like it draws a lot of fans once you like real and open up like who you are and where you come from. You can't be ashamed of where you come from. Honestly, you gotta shine because you're alive today and you came, you know, from where you came from. So like that's one thing I could just say is just honestly, just don't be afraid or ashamed of who you are. 
just be like, look, like everybody different. Everybody gonna shine. Show show them your light. You feel me? And like, don't be afraid. That's all I can say. Don't care. <laughs> like everybody, it's, music is opinionated, bro. Music is opinionated. This person might not like it, but this person gonna like it. He might not think this. This person gonna love it. It's like, who cares? Throw it out. Like honestly, that's that's what it is. Yeah, I completely agree with that. And I love that you said, don't be ashamed of who you are, where you came from, because nobody can do what you do like you do, right? Like that's that's your power is like, you, only you can tell your story the way that you can and that's your power. And so the more that you lean into that, the more people are gonna gravitate towards that genuine nature. And I think that speaks volumes to like, as you become, uh, as as you stay more true to yourself and and like understand what your story is, the more that you tell it, the more people gravitate towards your music and and who you are as a person. And I think that's great advice also for for our students as they kind of like navigate what to even talk about, right? Because sometimes part of the frustration with songwriting is trying to sound like somebody else, right? But it's like you have to you have to sit in and tap in. So what you're going through and what your story is, you can't tell somebody else's story. In fact, you can't be like nobody else. That's the only thing. Like, that's why a lot of people, you see a lot of these artists sound the same. You're like, bro, because you sound just like the other dudes, only one of him. Like, it's only going to be one little baby. It's only going to be one the baby. It's only going to be one this guy. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can still think great artists still, but make it your own. Like, flip it, you know, flip it into your, your sound. Don't be like nobody else because that person is in his lane. He's winning in his lane because that's who he is. Put your sauce on it. Like, literally, put your sauce on it. And everybody you see that's up and everybody's doing their thing because they who, are, who they are. Like, when you hear them, you're like, oh, I know who that is because, like, that's their sound. Mm -hmm. Find your sound. Like, really, like, literally, like, tune in. You can still, you can, you can still, great artists still, great artists still flip. You got to believe it. Most of his is recycled. Everybody is sampling hits that came out before, but they flip it into a way that's they, that's they sound, you know what I mean? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and I think that also that's such great, like that's such a great perspective as well, because, you know, I know that you have a lot of different musical influences, right? Like you can play jazz drums, you also like, you know, are, I really are being soul and like you also talked about like coming up off African drumming and like you know drumming of the diaspora um, which influences you know pr pretty much every rhythm right like every anything that you hear rhythmically um, but I would also like to hear you know as an, a multi-instrumentalist when did you kind of make an intentional shift towards um, towards like songwriting like I want to know a little bit more about your process as a songwriter, your process in production. I know that you, you're you in your house right now, so you're kind of show us like what you have, what you use when you're tracking things at home. Um, so I would love to hear a little bit about just like your your process, what plugins you use, um, you know, how you even go about like the kind of ideation of the song too. Okay, yeah, so. Yeah, I'm at the crib right now. I mean, usually I'm at the studio sometimes, but like, there's nothing like creating at home. I don't care what nobody says. I've done like, made the best music at the crib. Right, <laughs> Literally, right. To be honest, like, cause you're in your safe space, you, you're at your house, you know? Like, I, yeah, it's, it's so weird. Like, it's, um, I've, I've been at um, five week this week, obviously. I feel like I just haven't been able to make, like I've been jamming with people's a lot of fun, but I feel like I haven't, like in one of the studio spaces or a practice room or in tech room, I haven't been able to make anything as good as when I'm at home, so. I mean, I feel that same way sometimes too. Yeah, like it's something about the crib, I don't know how to explain it. Like when you at the crib, it's just like, you and your vibe, there's nothing, nothing ever wrong with that. Like I don't care what nobody says, you and your vibe, like, a lot of people waste time in the studios, to be honest. Like, if you create, like, a little rough, if you already know what you want at your crib, and then when you get to the studio, just really cut it, that's a, that's, that's a way, too. Because, it's like, honestly, you're in the studio, somebody got to pay for that time. Somebody got to pay the engineer. If you're taking a long time to write one song, the whole studio session is like, what did you do? But if you, like, make a couple of vibes at the crib and then go to the studio, you really cut it. 
because you didn't, you know, it's muscle memory at that point because you made it at the crib, you get in the studio, easy money. Like, that's Bob. But yeah, like, this is my setup. I use logic. I straight like, when I'm at the crib, I just, I'm in the kitchen because, like, you know, you're cooking. I'm at the kitchen. I don't really like being in the room. I like open space, to be honest. Like, I'm in the living room. It's like open, living room, kitchen. And uh, to be honest, I never ran away from logic. Like, logic till death. I'm not going to lie. I've been starting to get into Ableton. Um, Cause like it's easy like with drums and everything with Ableton, but like to this day I'm still recording in Logic, still running through Logic. I like Pro Tools too, but like I don't know, this is my love. Everybody has their opinion. So you have you have the Logic, you got the Ableton, you got Pro Tools and everything. Of course, like in the studios, everybody running Pro Tools, but to record. But Logic always been my love, and um, yeah, like I literally just to be honest, of course got that in Terry's out of tune. And I'm recording vocals, the out of tune seven. Uh, I don't know if y'all remember Evo. I loved Evo. I got it on my other laptop, but like they kind of took away Evo. It was like dope for R&B vocals, like next level. But out of tune seven is just as good. Definitely run with that. My verb that I love to, that I love to rock with is Valhalla. I don't know if y'all rock with Valhalla, but if you go to that vintage verb, that's what everybody uses. No lie, I'm in the studio with Demi Lovato, studio Selena Gomez, and Chris Brown. Valhalla Vintage Verb is what they're using on their vocals, like straight up. But I normally bust it. I don't like putting it, uh, I don't like putting it directly on it. So I normally go to the sin and I go to bus and I'll bust it. So I just drag that over to the bus because you don't want it like taken away from your vocals. If you put it directly on your vocal track, it might go away, like take away from your whole vocals. And then um, everybody, like, I don't know if you guys got the waves, but I still use waves. A good compression for the vocals on the bus is uh, this right here. This engineer named Drew, uh, he worked with Harvey Mason. He put me on this. It's the CLA 2A. And, like, make sure that analog is off because they get that little buzz. And, like, I put this on the vocals on the bus. And it just brings it out, like really brings it out. Um, there's so many tricks I could go on, on with that, but like, yeah, it's just like I stick to logic game, and more so like how like I got really good with it was honestly every single day. This is what I was on. I was kind of listening to like my favorite artists, like and Chris Brown, um, Drake, and everybody, and I'll just keep listening to their mix. And I'm trying to like imitate it with all the plugins I got. So I'll just be shifting, 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 just using every plugin, like until I try to get the same mix as them, like vocal mix. And like I finally had like had this chain. And like to this day, everybody's like, yo, how you get your vocals like that? Yo. And like when I, when I record people, sometimes I get called in as an engineer because people like the way I, I mix their vocals more than the engineer did. So I'm just like, okay, I, I can run that. And like I got this chain. And I kind of just like found that chain just from just messing around. You just keep messing around. Don't stick to the same chain all the time because you can get stuck into like one sound, like try different things on different songs until you find like something that's like, okay. And then you just tweak it a little bit. Cause each song, you just tweak it. Um, yeah, that's how I got into that, to the logic. I have a question about like, you know, cause I, I feel like mixing is so important both for instrumentalists and vocalists, right? And, and getting, especially right now, um, I don't know for those of you who are in the call, if, if you are learning about mixing and mastering in five weeks, but I bet that's something that you'll learn, um, you know, a little bit later. But I wonder, Henry, do you have any tips for, obviously you have a great ear. So like part of it is just being able to hear um, match the mix, right? And really like tweak it based on your ear, but like, were there any um, resources that you turn to in order to get your mix, your mixing skills um, up to par? And was it just spending time in the studio or did you just YouTube things or did you ask friends who are also producers? Like what was your process on getting that um, in, in gear? Uh, YouTube, to be honest, I was like, I was literally locked in. So like my last year at Berkeley, 
Like, man, tell y'all the truth, kid, man, I'm, I be turned. I be turned. Like, it's a good, have a good time, be lit and everything. Like, I was at a birthday, lit. I had a good time. Like, go to school, do your thing, but still have a good time. Don't ever, like, an A student be too, like, like, getting good grades is everything. Like, I don't care what anybody say. Getting good grades is everything. But don't be too locked in. Like, sometimes you got to, like, you got to, like, like, explore. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, look, Einstein, Einstein, everybody else, like, they wasn't really, like, getting straight A's. Like, you know what I mean? You got to, like, sometimes you got to, like, okay, do this, take from this, get what you got to get done. Do your homework, study for that test, do your thing. But don't be too stuck and locked in, like, on that. Like, do what you love. Like, like I kind of just, like, went to YouTube and it was just, like, kind of just, like, just, like, looking at different things, asking different questions and stuff. Like, I was turned, like, my whole five weeks, I was going to parties and everything. And in my last year, like, I literally, like, people was like, where's Henry? Where's Henry? Everybody hear me. You coming to this? I'm like, nah. What you doing? I'm at the crib. <laughs> where you at? Nah, like, I was locked in, literally, like, on YouTube, just trying to figure out, like, all right, because, like, of course, like, when you first start and everything's not going to be, like, the way you wanted it. I'm, like, I'm, I'm bouncing out stuff. Sounds distorted. I'm, like, bro, it's not sounding right. Like, I'm finding different ways. Like, what do you put on the out? What do you put on the master? I'm just looking on YouTube straight up, like, how do I make it not distort? Like, just every day, just, like, trying new things and just, like, looking at it, like, I was just locked in. I don't know how to really explain it. It was, like, a whole new beast after, like, I got it. Like, that's why you call it, like, you fall in love with something. Like, I even kind of, like, I put my hours in on drums. Like, I knew, like, I'm always going to be good on drums. Like, nobody could take that away from me. I know that for a fact. So I kind of, like, just locked into the production side of things. It was just, like, on YouTube. And, like, of course, like, at Berkeley, there's a couple of other producers. So I was asking them, like, what do you do with this? What do you do when you put it on here? Like, link up with your other producer, because they might know something that you don't know. You might know something that they might not know. And he could teach you something and you could just flip it like, oh, y'all both figure out something at the same time. Like literally use your peers that do the same thing and link up because y'all can learn together, teach each other something. And like, that's how I did it. Literally, I was locked in and I just got a bunch of people just pull up to the crib. Like, pull up, come on. Like, what you doing right now? Like, you finna go to that party? Man, don't pull up the party. Pull up on me. Let's lock in. Like, tap in with your peers that do the same thing. I got the same interest on something like, Y'all can learn together. Like, oh, I just found out that you could compress and do this reverse thing. You know how to do that? Well, I didn't know how to do that. Show me. It's like, it's just like be open book with your with, with your friends. Don't be scared to tap in with your friends and show people because you grow together. Because like, you never know like what your partner's gonna be like in in years. What what y'all gonna do in years? So it's like it's good to lock in, like really form together, lock in, and collab together. Because that's how that's how you're gonna learn like quicker. Like you can't do everything by yourself. Like YouTube was cool and everything. I learned a lot from YouTube, but it was more so just like collabing with the homies that kind of like got me better. Like collabing with the like my friends who who was doing the same thing, to be honest. Yeah, I agree with that. I would I think that you know sometimes even it doesn't matter what age you're at. That, there, that sometimes you with the fear of you not knowing something stop you from collaborating or or you know partnering up with your peers and you, and at any age don't let that be a barrier because learning together and learning laterally collaborating laterally and not always looking you know for someone to tell you something from the top down is really important um, I remember Henry and I got lunch like, two or three years ago and I was just curious about songwriting, understanding publishing. And he gave me like a 15 minute breakdown of, of all this information that I didn't even know because I wasn't scared to ask him. And so just don't be scared to, um, you know, collaborate with your peers and, and, and learn together and just like ask lots of questions, especially while you're all here on campus together. Um, this is the time to do that. I want to know, Henry, about like what you specifically have on your setup. So you have your monitors, right? You have logic, you have your interface, right? I, I would love to see like, you know, you've got your keyboard. What do you feel like is needed for like a basic setup for kind of someone who's getting started? 
Oh yeah, I got my HS HSH. To be honest, I got this literally from the guitar center across the street from Berkeley. I don't know if it's still there. <laughs> yeah. But I got these from there. It was having a sale. So I had grabbed them real quick. Uh, the HSH is dope. I like the HS5s. They clean too. Um, but these like basic, like the HSA is basic for the crib, HS5 is basic for the crib because like, I don't know, I was getting so many noise complaints. I had an apartment at Berkeley. Man, I had it like, man, I don't even know. I just got cool with the manager at the apartment, to be honest. She saved me because I was like, bro, I can't not like slap. Like, I can't slap, not slap. Like, what? So like, I got cool with the manager. I'll go down. I'm like, bro, you want some lunch? Woo woo. The apartment manager gave him some lunch. I'm just like, man, you get a noise complaint, man. Just come on, man. You know, I'm, I'm trying to learn. So he kind of finessed it. But like, if you got like, you know, they tripping about noise and everything, HS5s is cool. You know, it's not going to be bad at all. The Apollo, for sure. Like, this changed the game for me. Like, I used to be, I used to have focus, right? But when I started rocking with the the uh, the Apollo, the vocals just came in clean. You feel me? Uh, the mic, I mean, honestly, like, of course, Newman, everything's like basic. I got this MXL, my homie Alex Chang, actually. Like this MXL, the basic uh, MXL actually hella good. Clear vocals, hella clear, warm. People be sleep on the MXL. This the uh, V67, uh, people be sleep on it. But my homie Alex Chang, actually, he makes mics and he kind of took the, uh, the Newman U87, the insides and put it inside of here. Cause he, he yeah. be bored. <laughs> I don't know, he's just like one of those like, making stuff and then uh, of course the kata uh eyeball is definitely dope because I don't, I don't like that big shield you know everybody be using the shield it just begin in the way so like this is just like perfect compact kata eyeball they got like the, um the same thing on amazon it's like comparable it's not as expensive at all it's, it's practically the same thing um and yeah i'm just running straight through straight through logic Awesome. And then do you also have a MIDI keyboard or a keyboard that you Oh, use? yeah. It's my MIDI right here. Nice. Always. I got the Akai. Like, I always run through the Akai. I don't know. I fell in love with Akai. I've had everything else, M-I-D-O and everything. Um, I got when I was at Berkeley, I had the M. You said what? No, I got. I, I went to the uh, tech lab yesterday. I got to use the um, MPC. And it was the most amazing experience I've had in the world. Right, NPCs go crazy. <laughs> yeah. If you if you rock it with the NPC right now, that's a big shout out because people be sleep on the NPC. <laughs> NPC still go crazy. Yeah. Do we have another question? I think we have one more. If you want to come off the mic, you can go ahead and ask directly. Is it cool if I just go? Sure. Um. So I got a question for you, Henry. So. Why do you have your setup just like in your kitchen? Like, what do you, I, I'm just a little curious. Like, is it really good in there? Or like, do you have another setup around your house? Just wondering, cause I always have a hard time finding a good way to set up my, my stuff. Cause I have a pretty small desk at home. That was it, like honestly, cause like, to be honest. So when I'm moving this spot, I'm in LA by the way, moved up over here. And uh, I was in the room and everything. I just felt clustered. like. I've always had it set up in my room and it's always been on the desk and everything. And it was just like, all right, my bed over here and everything is just like too close to my bed, like too close to this, like TV up in here. And um, one day I just went to the kitchen. I was just like, hey, I seen like, I got like a little island or whatnot, like a little island. It's just like more space in the kitchen. I don't know. It just depends on like your step of the crib. Like if like your crib, if like, the kitchen's kind of small, then I'll just, you know, it's cool in the room. I've always had to set up in the room. Like, it's the first time I've ever set up my stuff in the kitchen. And it's just because of the space. It's like the room. It's like the vibe. Kind of just like the vibe for me in the kitchen was just better than the vibe for me in the room. But previously, I always used to have it in my room. Sometimes it's good to have a separation between where you sleep and lay your head and where you work too, you know, cause that it part. is, yeah. Cause then it's, it's, it's hard. It's hard to have like a clear separation between like rest and work. So. And then plus you got the room. He was like, I'm going to the kitchen. I'm about to go cook up. 
Right, right. It's perfect. Easy call. Um, yeah, I think it also depends on your space and like if you have a lot of noise in your common space, like probably don't want to record there, but you're you're lucky because you have like a nice open space. So that's good. Um, but thank you for sharing your basic setup with us because I think that's gonna be really helpful for people who are starting to record their music and probably getting familiar with like what they need in their kind of toolkit as they go through five week. Um, I wanna open it up though for questions for our last kind of eight to 10 minutes so that you guys can ask Henry direct questions. Um, feel free to come off the mic if you wanna just ask directly or you can drop it in the chat and we'll read them out. All right, I wanna ask a question. Uh, Henry, man, I have a question for you, man. Uh, here. Like I live in Ecuador and I met a band, a local band that's kind of famous around here about like five years ago. And from them, I started getting paranoid because one of the things they told me was to like, when I told them my age, like I think that was five years ago. No, it was six years ago. I was 21. Uh, they told me that if I wanted to make it, I better hurry up. And ever since then, ever since then, I have I've been dealing with this feeling that if I don't hurry up, like the industry itself, music is going to consider me to be like too old to make it. Is that something that I should like completely not think about? Because I, I hear some people tell me that's kind of nonsense, but there's other people. Hey, there's not a number, buddy. You got good music, you got good music. Look at Jay-Z, Jay-Z started at 26. Come on out, Jay-Z really bring me breakthrough at 26. Uh, if you like Lucky Day R&B, he is 34 years old. People wouldn't even know that. Uh, Lucky Day is 34 years old. And he basically last year, last two years, has been making his breakthrough on r and He's one of the best R&B artists right now. He's 34. And like age, bro, like don't even trip about age. Honestly, don't even listen to the critics. There's always going to be critics. There's always going to be haters. Don't listen. You got to tune that up. Focus on you and focus on the music and focus how you can relate to your fans. Focus how you can build your fans because there's always going to be listeners. It's ageless for real. Wow. That was awesome. You got to tune them out, bro. Don't be tripping what people saying. Like That's the whole thing about this. People get to in their head. Tune them out. Focus on you. Do your thing. Like, it's always going to be a hater. You're doing the right thing. Like, it's always going to be a hater. It's always going to be somebody who's feeling this type of way. It's always going to be somebody who's this. Just focus on you. Tunnel vision, man. Keep doing your thing. Keep building. Keep progressing. That's all that matters. As long as you're progressing, that's all that matters. Absolutely. Do we have any other questions? Anyone else want to hop on? Romero? Um. Uh, what does the songwriting process look like for you when you work with these bigger artists and how does that work into how how you produce oh yeah so everybody has different songwriting problems i'm not gonna lie so um i have my own like my way like i like listen to the track or if like we're going as, as a songwriter i like listening to the track a couple times and i'll freestyle melodies you know what i mean like i'm gonna freestyle melodies and then i write into my melodies that's how I like to do it. That's just like me personally. I like to write into my melodies. And then like when I produce, I always start with melodics first. I'm a drummer, but I start with melodics first. I don't know why. I kind of just go to like the keys, like try to fill out some melodies first. And then I'll go to the drums. Um, but like when I worked with Selena Gomez, I made, I'm on her last album, Rare. You guys should hear my voice on Ring. Um, it's a song called Ring on Selena Gomez's last album, Rare. Um, when we were working with her, it's different, like, everybody has, like, different processes, so it's, like, with them, we literally, like, they had the track, really, the track was basically done. I added some percussion stuff on it, because it was, like, oh, you play percussion, so, like, I added percussion and stuff, like, post-production vibes, but when it came to the writing and stuff, like, their thing was way different. They didn't, they didn't go in and record, they didn't go in and record any, like, melodies or nothing like that. It was based off first what they hear, like literally, they went exactly what they heard first. And like, we kind of like, it was like 
the structure was so different. Like the pop structure is so different than like R and B. It's like stricter. Like the melody on this verse got the same like same melody on this verse. But R and B you and or like travel hip hop like this verse can be different than this verse. But like it was so strict. It was different. But you just gotta adapt. Literally. Yeah. Thanks for asking that. Um. Romero. Uh, oh, we have one more question. How have you been adapting your drums in your music production process? Oh, yeah. So, like, that's easy. Honestly, like, just being a drummer, like, you know, you always, we always control the beat. We, we feel it. I kind of just, like, always, like, sometimes here, I just, like, I kind of, like, beatbox it or something, like, in my head, or, or I beatbox it. And then I kind of just, like, find the sound. And, like, from what I was beatboxing, I just, like, straight play it. But I never play it all at once. So like what I was hearing on the kick, I'm gonna just do the kick on one track. I always separate my drums. I hate like putting two things on one track. So I'll just be like kick. And I like lay that down and I go to the snare or whatever else. Beatbox and I play that snare. I play it and I always like just label it. Like everything has its own track to be honest. Cause I know some people, some producers, they just like, like produce all in one, but like when it comes to mixing to make it like the best sound, I like separating these tracks. I have a question. Um, when you're when you're using or when you're tracking drums, do you sample yourself or do you like lay like a drum track of yourself playing the drums, or do you ever sample your own drums and then load them in and start? playing them like on um, a beat pad? Actually, like I do like, honestly, cause like, I think like I made this one record called uh, To The End and uh, actually sent that to Chris. And um, like the beginning of it, like the percussion, I was beating on my desk and I was like, yo, let me, uh, let me record that real quick. So I literally put my mic, I literally put the mic cause it come off like this. I had put it on the desk like that. And I was literally like this in the beginning for like the percussion sounds just like, like I filtered it and I put in like uh, CLA effects. I like CLA effects, it's on waves. I kind of put like the distortion on it and I put it like hella reverb in it. And it kind of just made like this dope ass percussion sound just from beating on my desk. And it was dope. And then like, you know, mixed it into the beat. That's awesome. That's yeah. really cool, uh, especially like just drumming on the uh, on the desk. It just shows you like when you when you mix it, you can make anything happen. You can make anything. No, nah, definitely happen. you can mix anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have two last questions. What drummers do you listen to, and who is your biggest inspiration? Oh, okay, so when I was when I was really like heavy on drums, when I started with jazz, I like R. Blaggy. I like uh. Buddy Rich a lot because he's fast. I just like playing fast. I just want those drummers just like fast. So Buddy Rich on the, on the jazz side. Uh, Thomas Pridgen, when it came, because I'm from the Bay. Thomas Pridgen was from the Bay. He was always like the young goat for me. Thomas Pridgen. And I always watched the battle between Thomas Pridgen and Tony Royster. So I was, I was listening to them. And then uh, Sticks, too. Like Sticks go crazy. Um, Sticks Taylor, he played for uh, Justin Bieber and everybody. He go crazy. Like, I used to just, like, slap that and then gospel chops. I came out during gospel chops, too. So I kind of just, like, watched the gospel chops videos. And, um, yeah, and those, like, really my drummers. It was Thomas Frisian, Tony Royster, Steve Taylor, on the jazz side, Buddy Rich. And what was the uh, last question? It was, uh, who is your biggest inspiration? Um yeah, and then we have one more question, and then that'll be it. <laughs> okay. Um, to be honest, like, I got so many inspirations. Like, I don't even have, like, one biggest inspiration. To be honest, I'm inspired by so much. I'm inspired by people I even came up with. Like, the first, like, inspiration I, uh, for somebody, like, my age, I came up with was an artist named Kaylani because, like, I was in, a, like, a, a band with her growing up. Uh, I used to be working with Kaylani, Zendaya, and uh, Gabby Wilson, who was her. And like all them inspired me to know that like, you can make it out and do your thing. Like, and they like my age. They inspire me and they like my peers. <laughs> um, another inspiration, 
was honestly like uh not Chris. It was like really like I'm not gonna lie, like coming up Chris Brown, I was like Chris Brown was like real. I'm trying to sound like Chris. That's how I taught myself really how to sing is listening to Chris Brown and stuff. And um that inspiration, uh my pops, my pops inspired me. Cause you know, the hustle, I got the hustle from my pops. Cause you feel me when we really when we really didn't when we really didn't have much, like he he had three jobs, like grind to put food on the table. So it was like I'm kind of inspired by a lot. Like I get inspired not just by one person, but just like a lot of people, to be honest. I can learn a lot from anybody. All right. Our last question is what is the best uh, advice? What is the best advice you've ever received? And I'm gonna flip that question and say, after you answer that, what's advice that you would give to all of our students who are on this Zoom call? Mm, I like that. So like some of the best advice that I ever got was uh, literally be true, be true to you, be true to yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like the best advice was like I ever, like that I ever got was like be true to myself. And honestly, like really don't care what anybody say. And like, like really just, stay driven like focus on you like don't let anybody like try to tear you down bring you down anything because it's like it's crazy like in the world we live in you would think people you know be nicer people not like that it's a, it's a gritty gritty world to be real like i'd rather be real with y'all now y'all know that like and everybody your friend and everybody this like just stay true stay true to yourself i'm like hold your value and don't let, let anybody ever like manipulate you or anything like that like really like tell you to do this, tell you to do this, because a lot of people can steer you away from what you're really trying to do. Like, that's my advice that I learned. I had to really learn because, like, coming out, you could be out naive. My first came to uh, L.A., I believe this. Oh, I can do this for you. I can do this for you. A lot of people's, like, broken promises and stuff. Or, like, a lot of people, like, be your friend, act like they're your friend, but, like, have, like, ulterior motives and stuff like that. Like, all I can say is, like, Stick to your plan. If you believe this is what you want to do and this is this is your sound, this is that, like, I believe this is that. Stick to your ground, believe that's that. Put that up. Don't let nobody be like, oh, I don't think you should put this out. I think you should do this. And then, like, you never put it out. Or, like, you waited six months to ever put out that record. You waited six months to ever try this. You waited this. When you wanted to do it then and somebody else told you, oh, wait this. Like, honestly, like, just go for it. Do it. Don't just talk about it, really do it, like, do it. Like, all I can say is really just do it. Be you and do it. Don't let nobody tell you different, just do it. And that's honestly, like, it took me a minute to get that and learn that. And like, but like, since I've been doing it and just like focusing on like, you know, me on what I want to do and everything just falls into place. It just comes into play, like, so I can say, like, honestly. That's great advice. That's amazing advice. Yeah, um, sure. I completely agree. Uh, thank you so much for joining us for this hour. It's been so great to, to talk to you, hear the students ask questions. Um, I know that I, I feel like the students got a lot out of this. I would love to know how the students can keep following you. So I put your Instagram down there so they can follow your music. Um, I know you have stuff on all streaming platforms, so you can look him up there. Um, we'll send a recap in, uh, email with the YouTube link so that you can look at the video again, catch these gems again, um, and also links to, to Henry's music. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to say before we close or? Yeah, like, to be honest, like, I'm like, City Music, my family, like, City Music changed me. Like, I'm always, City Music changed my life. Like, I, I'm, I'll say that to like, to this day, like I'll hold that to the tour, like to life. Like, you feel me? Dr. Banfield, Mr. Curtis changed my life. Like, like to be honest, like literally changed my life. Like, I don't even know what I could even say. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so honestly, like anything y'all need, like tap in. Like I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for somebody looking out. You know what I mean? I wouldn't be where I'm at if it wasn't for somebody. It's good people out here. There's still good people. There's a lot of the bad people, but it's good people. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the good people looking out and the good people giving me software and the good people like Henry, like check us out, we'll teach you something. So like anything y'all need, tap in with me. Like I'm gonna always help anybody city music. Like 
tap in with me. Like, I swear on everything. Like, I'll help. Whatever I can do, I got, like, I know a heck of people out here in L.A. If I ever look for internship, studios, anything you're trying to do, tap in with me. Tap in with Sam, Mr. Linwood, Dr. B. And contact me if you're looking for any, like, type of internship or anything in L.A. You in L.A., you visit L.A., tap in with me, take you to the studio, anything, like, it's whatever, like it's all love, like, and that's that's for life. So like, y'all just stay focused, like you know, like see, music always look out, stay focused, stay focused on your craft, like stay focused. It's the time to be focused. Like, are you there now? This the time, like, go crazy, like, do what you love, like, really do your thing and put it out now, like, put it out. Don't wait, put it out in five weeks. You blow it in five weeks. You don't even know. Put it out. Don't be scared. Just throw it out there. Progression is key. Like everybody's gonna go back to your old stuff, and like years later, like they looking at it like, dang, you really this is your first song to now. Like, put it out. Don't be scared. None of that. So that's all I can say. Like, stay true. Put your music out. Don't care what nobody say. Put it out. You believe in it? Put it out. Cause you're gonna just get better. Easy. And like, like I said, I'm an open book, open hand for anybody to see music. Tap in. Uh, I'm still growing right now, so y'all coming at the right time. I'm going to blow up easy. I, I be in the rooms with everybody, so, like, I'm still growing right now, too. So it's like, while I'm learning, I can teach y'all something, too, because like, I'm still in the field. I'm in the field every day. So, yeah, just tap in. Thank you, Henry. Thank you so much. Um, if y'all have any other questions, you can send us an email. Um, we'll recap with all the resources that Henry provided during this time. And otherwise, have a great day and great uh, rest of your classes. Stay focused and we'll talk to you next week. Bye. Right, Peace. Bye. Peace. Bye.